is Tim Moffat, and this is my presentation on Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo was founded in 1852 as a banking and express company. The organization is the second largest bank in the United States ever having bought out banking giant Wachovia in 2008. Currently, Wells Fargo is scrambling to find footing with stakeholders after having been found to be utilizing unethical, in some cases criminal behavior in recent years by forging foreclosure documents and opening ghost accounts in the names of existing customers without their consent. The Federal Reserve has kept the organization from growing business until it has addressed these shortcomings. However, the organization has not been the same, seen the same growth as, as it had previously experienced. The freezes in growth will most likely cause shares of the organization's stock to pause until it can prove it's been rehabilitated. The scandal leads to both internal and external publics interpreting the organization as being callous and motivated primarily by profits. According to primary and secondary research, the organization needs to find a way to connect with customers on a personal level, reduce the amount of overall draft fees, forgive late credit and mortgage payments on a merit basis, and stoke goodwill with internal stakeholders. Wells Fargo publics rely on several international aspects of wealth management and community banking that affect stakeholders across the world. The organization is the second largest bank in the United States, and it's safe to assume that nearly everyone has a stake in the successful rehabilitation of Wells Fargo. The investment wing of the organization should continue to thrive for stakeholders that is the most profitable part of Wells Fargo. The issues with public stems from mortgage lending, ghost savings, and checking accounts being overdrafted, and late fees on mortgage applications. This means that the public should be most affected are the middle and lower ca class stakeholders who need the organization to work with them. The other public that has amended needs are internal stakeholders who were threatened and some fired by the organization for whistleblowing. Wells Fargo needs to be proactive in gaining back public trust by showing remorse through actions, essentially living up to their own code of ethics. By changing organizational attitudes and behavior to focus on message awareness and gain back stakeholders by instilling confidence in the organization, framing the conversation and taking control of the narrative with gentle persuasion as opposed to force will guide Wells Fargo back to the sphere of public trust by defining the problems facing the organization, changing cultural norms, and altering the behavior of the organization which has been motivated by monetary gain. Also, shoring up holes in lapsed customer service to ensure that the organization meets all the criteria set out by stakeholders for a satisfactory organization. Focus publics being studied are those that rely on banks for loans and do not have expendable income. The concepts being addressed are how much do you trust your bank, how attached are you to your banking institution, and what could possibly instill a sense of trust back into your banking experience. The subjects were randomly selected and polled on January 2018. The poll takers represent a cross-section of working professionals who reasonably epitomize average middle-class Americans using Wells Fargo or a comparable banking institution. Broad terms were used to allow participants to weigh in on what is important to them in banking customer service. A questionnaire was drawn up with five questions that utilized the following measurement scales. Ranking scale, two Likert scales, frequency scale, and feeling thermometer. The questions and process through which the answers were obtained falls into the category of informal research it is essentially a real-time survey that we use to get a broad sense of what the public think about big banks. The clear themes are as follows. Most people have little to no attachment to their banks based on the feeling thermometer. The consensus was basically neutral with some variation on both sides, but not in any extremes. On the frequency scale, most people never or hardly ever actually enter their banks, so there is very little human interaction in any transaction. Both Likert scale tests were unanimous. Customers believe Wells Fargo and other big banks should be responsible for the financial well-being of their customers, and they should be free of scandal and intimidation tactics for monetary gain. The ranking scale of banking importance was a little more varied in its results. However, the willingness to work with delinquent stakeholders scored high across the board. Going forward, I think it would be imperative to engage in media content analysis to measure media outputs, outtakes, and outcomes. Valid, reliable information replaces practitioners' reliance on past practices, hunches, industry standards, and rules of thumb. The organization has previously played loose, honoring their commitment to their stakeholders. They should set an objective to make more connections with their stakeholders on a personal level by organizing a national campaign, reaching out to stakeholders, and offering financial advice, informational seminars, and weekly meetup meetups at the branch offices might help to ingratiate the organization to stakeholders who may be soured on their behavior. The overall goal for this campaign campaign is to educate and to empower consumers on the subject of their money and how to invest and save for their future. This can be quantified through further surveys given at or after the seminars and by checking the rates of accounts and different kinds of accounts open from the beginning of the campaign and every month after. Wells Fargo should concurrently run a good faith campaign, eliminating overdraft fees, minimum fees for checking accounts, and a month grace period on late credit card payments in order to set a precedent for good behavior going forward. The time frame for the first two objectives should be a year with incentive to sign up for overdraft protection afterwards.
This would instill faith that the organization has the stakeholders' best interests in mind, but will still make money for the organization. This could be quantified by analyzing the amount of new accounts opened over the year and juxtaposing them to the previous years. Secondary research shows that Wells Fargo has embarked on an image campaign. The bank's stated long-term goals include refining customer service, improved team member interaction, innovation, improved risk management, and company citizenship, and maximize shareholder value. However, Wells Fargo was forced by the Federal Reserve to change out management at the top of the organization, which may help to instill a sense of accomplishment with stakeholders. It is a missed opportunity to have a decision to better the organization from within. The organization needs to improve engagement with stakeholders and instill trust in their publics by showing stakeholders that they have a personal interest in the long-term well-being and health of Wells Fargo. By treating customers with respect and showing through actions that the organization has turned a new leaf by eliminating the previous management that allowed the organization to flourish under terrible circumstances will effectively prove that the organization has changed their behavior and attitude. Following suggestions made in the secondary and primary research, the organization should institute a policy of forgiveness for overdraft fees that constitutes more than two overdraft forgivenesses a year and should, over, and should offer overdraft protection. Anyone who signs up for their protection should be polled about how their opinion of the organization may have changed. The objection is to change the minds of those who would have been previously been subject to overdraft fees to see if the changes have swayed their opinion. Polling quarterly and at the year mark will give the stakeholders time to see the changes reflected in their statements. Late fees on mortgages should be given leniency based on need and past overdue payments. If the amount of mortgage loans being written increased based on the stipulations over a six-month period, then it is reasonable to think that the objective is meeting the goal of winning back stakeholders. The overall goal is to prove that Wells Fargo has gotten a handle on their previous issue and is worthy of being trusted with other people's money in order to be profitable. It's imperative that the organization meets and exceeds these objectives in order to continue doing business on the scale they were used to and to restore the organization to a profitable status. It's necessary not just for profitability in the short term for the organization, but the longer it takes for their, them to be restored to its previous status by the Federal Reserve, the less confidence will exist in stakeholders. This has a cascading effect on the organization as trust is vital for stakeholders to invest money, meaning time is critical for the organization to quickly and effectively begin the process of rehabilitating its image with stakeholders and all of the publics that interact with the organization to quell any further reputational damage.